What's going on guys? Welcome to my early Iron Man guide video for Old School RuneScape. Basically this guide is going to be for people who are either just starting off with their Iron Man fresh off the tutorial island, or maybe you've been playing for a little bit and you just really don't know what to do next. I'm going to help you out and give you some goals that you should set your sights on. Now in terms of goals, of course everybody's goal is to max eventually, but if you create a goal that is so far out of reach, you might get early burnout. To avoid early burnout, we're going to set some very attainable goals, you know, such as 43 prayer. Uh, maybe you want to get 55 magic. Maybe you want to get graceful, those types of things. So you want to make sure that you are setting goals that are very attainable, that isn't going to take you a whole year to get. Now, before we get into the actual guide, I think we need to decide if we want to efficiently play this account or if we want to play for fun. Now, if you want to do it efficiently, there are tons of actual Iron Man step-by-step -step guides on what you should do. For example, there's the Osiris guide, which I'll leave a link to in the description. It'll give you a step-by-step -step what you should do, what you should pick up, what items you should get, all the way up until basically end game, which is cool. My personal issue with doing something like that is... If you are following a step-by-step -step progression guide that tells you exactly what to do down to the T, you find after the guide is over, you really don't know what to do, how to play, or what you should really be doing. So if you are a seasoned player and you're not worried that that will burn you out or leave you lost, then I would say for sure go that route. Um, on my most recent Iron Man, I decided to go the opposite direction. I decided just to have fun. Basically what having fun entails is doing whatever you want, not doing it efficiently and realizing that at the end of the day, we are all going to reach the same end goal. However, it might not be in the same time period. Now that does leave you with a whole lot of things that you can do. Obviously with RuneScape being a sandbox game, then you are left with a ton of options on what to do. But in 2023, even going into 2024, there are a ton of ways that you could start an Iron Man and still make pretty good progression. And I'm going to show you exactly what I did on that route. One of the best ways to start an account and still have fun is to do some of the mini games. Now, what I did is I did Guardians of the Rift, which if you don't know, that is the runecrafting mini game. The best thing about that is it only requires the quest Temple of the Eye to actually gain access to the mini game and it will automatically get you to the level requirement you need for the minigame. So I started off with that on my account. It ended up being awesome because A, you end up getting a ton of early runes that you're going to need anyway, uh, made early magic training easy, got me a ton of law runes for teleporting, and overall it wasn't just super boring. The next minigame you should look to do early is Temporos. Now Temporos is the fishing minigame that does require 35 fishing, However, once you start doing this, the good thing with this mini game is you're going to get early food. You're going to get some early cash because out of the rewards, you can actually get rune items. And there are good ways to sell that while still gaining maximum money without having high alchemy. So that's another great mini game to do just to have some fun. The next mini game I'm going to mention is Wintertop. Now, if you're a seasoned player or even a seasoned Iron Man player, then you know this is probably the one way that everybody starts their Iron Man accounts. Um, the reason I started with the other two mini games is because I've made numerous Iron Men in the past um, and I've done the early games so many times that Winter Talk kind of got boring to me. But maybe you love the mini game, so definitely go and do that. All you need is 50 fire making and some food. Um, you can get food pretty easily from the RD cake stall after you get five thieving. Once you gather up about 100 or 200 cakes, you can actually go all the way up to 99 fire making if you want to. It's a pretty quick skill to get there. Or what I usually like to do is stop around 90 because there is a achievement diary that requires that. Or if I'm really just not feeling it, I'll just go straight to about 75. That usually gets me about 100 to 150k cash to get the account started. The best part about doing these mini games first is it does get you a decent amount of cash to start the account with. That's usually the big uh, barrier for early Iron Man is not having enough money. And usually what you need the money for is runes, honestly. So uh, the Guardians of the Rift mini game is going to help a lot with that. Um, also, while you are doing Temporos, I would recommend completing Gertrude's cat so that you can get a kitten. 
If you raise that, it takes about three hours to raise, and you can feed it the fish directly from Temporos. You can actually trade the cat in for death runes at West Arty to any of the citizens, and then just sell the death runes, stock up on the death runes, do whatever you want with those. Now that you have a little bit of cash, I'm sure you're wondering, what do I do with it? Now, at this point, what I usually like to do is start getting 43 prayer. Now, there are a couple quests such as Restless Ghost and Holy Grail, and a couple quests that will give you pretty good prayer XP that I would recommend doing first. Um, if you don't want to do those first, that is fine. What you can do for prayer is you can either do A, the best method, which is killing blue dragons. You go down into Tavalry, you get the Dusty Key, you walk all the way around, you kill blue dragons, get their dragon bones, and use those on the Chaos Altar in the Wilderness. That'll get you 43 prayer pretty quickly. Um, if you have 70 agility already, you can use the uh, shortcut down in the Tavalry Dungeon to get to blue dragons. That'll make that super easy. Now, that is definitely the more hardcore efficient method. In my opinion, it's a little bit boring. So what I actually did was I went the Ensouled Heads method. Um, basically with Ensouled Heads, you can go to Arceus on Zaya and reanimate the heads for prayer XP. Now, what I did was I camped Hill Giants, got some of my combat stats up, got my magic up. Um, I also stocked up on some Hill Giant keys so that I could do the Obor boss for a little bit extra cash as well. And I did that all the way to 43 prayer. It was actually a little bit more fun in my opinion because it was a little bit more attentive, but definitely a couple ways that you can go there to get your 43 prayer out of the way. Now that we have some cash, some runes, and maybe even 43 prayer, the best thing to do is to start questing. Your main objective for questing, your long-term goal, is going to be to complete Recipe for Disaster to unlock the Barrel's Gloves. Now, there aren't a lot of requirements that you are going to need before completing that, so don't be too worried about it and just attain those as you go. One of the big quests you're going to want to get done as soon as possible, though, is Fairy Tale Part 1. Basically, what that's going to do is unlock fairy rings, and it's going to allow you to travel around the world of Gilinar very easily. The other thing that it unlocks is a nice little fairy code to take you to Tree Spirits. The reason Tree Spirits is so nice is because you can actually safe spot those, kill them with Fire Strike, and gain a ton of nature runes. You're going to want to stock up on a ton of nature runes because those are going to allow you to get to 55 magic, which allows you to unlock high alchemy. Basically, with high alchemy, you are going to be able to high alk expensive items such as rune items for a good chunk of money. Um, it's very important for any Iron Man, especially into the mid to late game, so that when you are doing Slayer, you are going to be basically funding your account directly through that. Now you're probably wondering, if you don't have 55 magic and you don't really want to rush 55 magic, how you can get the maximum amount of profit for any rune items or any expensive items that you might have. Basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to complete Plague City so that you gain access to West Arduin, and you're going to want to go into West Arty to the general store. There you can actually sell any of your expensive items for a better profit than you would get at any other general store. So that's going to be the best place to sell any expensive items before you get high alchemy. If you are selling items here and you're selling a large quantity, I would recommend selling maybe one or two at this shop per world just to maximize profits. One skill that's going to be extremely useful for your overall experience is agility. Now, in my personal opinion, agility is relatively boring. I know some people actually like this skill, which is also very odd. But one thing you actually will need to do is A, get to 70 agility. It's just something you're going to need for some quests anyway. But also, you're going to roughly be that level anyway once you get full graceful. Now, full graceful basically will make your weight reduction super low. And it also allows you to gain your run energy back extremely fast. So that is very, very helpful. Um, all you really need to do is do rooftop agility get to about 40 agility, go to Canifus, and then from Canifus, you can do from 40 to 60, actually, while gaining the maximum amount of marks. Anything after level 60, you're going to get reduced marks on that rooftop agility course. Now, the early training for agility is pretty awful. Um, the XP per hour isn't that great, so there are a couple quests that you can do to get some of the early levels out of the way, 
such as Tourist Trap, and then you can just use the XP lamps on Agility, and at that point, you should be a high enough level to then just go ahead and do the Grand Tree, which will also give you a little bit more Agility XP, and end you somewhere around, I believe, 30 Agility or so. Another important quest that I like to rush and get out of the way is the Bone Voyage quest. Basically, that's going to unlock Fossil Island. Now, Fossil Island has a ton of different activities that you can do, but the main ones you're going to focus on, especially as an early Iron Man, is the birdhouse runs and the seaweed farming. Now, the birdhouse runs are going to give you a good amount of hunter XP, and they are also going to give you bird's nests. Now, bird's nests are going to be used quite a bit later on for Herblore. It's going to help you create Ceridome and Brews. Obviously, you're not going to have to worry about that for quite a while, but it's nice to stock up on those. And also, out of the bird's nest, you can actually get some jewelry, which you can high elk or sell for a little extra cash. Now, as for the seaweed farming, you get giant seaweed. Giant seaweed is going to be super, super helpful for crafting later on. Now, there are other methods to do crafting that I will mention here shortly. So you don't necessarily need to do this method, but it, again, would help. These activities on fossil island definitely are a little bit more tedious i tend to skip them even though i shouldn't just because they feel a lot more like dailies than anything else but for the early game they are super helpful i would recommend doing it if you can stomach it once you're a combat level 40 and you have a total level of 500 i would definitely recommend doing the soul wars mini game i have done this on all of my iron men since soul wars has been out and it gets you a ton of money. I'm probably going to even do it a little bit more on a higher level Iron Man because of the bolts that you get. You get a lot of rune bolts, a lot of addy bolts. Definitely would recommend doing that. There are some clan chats that you can join that do some boosting for Soul Wars as well. Um, but the drop table there is super, super good, especially at that low level. And it'll give you enough cash to get you going for quite a while. Earlier, I mentioned how Giant Seaweed would be a very important thing to get out of the way so that you can get early crafting levels and late game crafting levels. Um, another very good method of getting crafting XP is to mine shooting stars. Basically, that's going to allow you to get some mining XP, but you're also going to get star fragments. Now, those star fragments you can then turn in for gem bags. In the gem bags, you're going to get 30 noted gems. Those you can then cut and get basically free crafting XP while you were training mining i definitely recommend that method um, that's what helped me get to 61 crafting pretty quickly without really having to do anything else because i was just afk at the stars anyway once all is said and done and you have your barrels gloves you're your 43 prayer you have your 55 magic and you're ready to really just start your combat grind then i would recommend just working towards 58 slayer your next big unlock is going to be the Black Mask, which you can unlock from the Cave Horrors. Now, those are locked behind a quest, so you are going to have to do a few quests to unlock the Black Mask. But that's going to be your next big milestone. And honestly, at that point, that's when I would kind of say you're starting to really reach the mid-game, which is mostly your Slayer grinds and your Combat grind. That's going to be about it for this early Iron Man guide. I didn't want it to get too convoluted with a bunch of unnecessary things. These are basically the things that I enjoy doing when I start an Iron Man and that I have the most fun doing without things becoming a little bit too tedious. Um, again, if you have fun playing efficiently, then I definitely would recommend doing that. Um, I try to prioritize having fun versus doing things super efficiently. Some things I do efficiently still, but... This is basically how I start my accounts. I have a lot of fun doing it, and I hope you find some fun in doing it as well. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, drop a sub, drop a comment, and let me know what you think. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.